I had smoked marijuana a long time ago, and I said, whoa, why do people do this? You know, I wanted to know how, how they felt when they did this, and I, you know, I just, it was awful. You know, I was driving my car, and I kept saying, I gotta slow down. I looked at the speedometer. I'm going 35 miles an hour on a 55 mile zone. You know, and, and maybe I shouldn't put this on TV, but I think it's, it's uh, I think it's well to know these things. You know, you can't condemn something unless you try it. That's my theory. You know, um, so that's all I have to say about drugs. Thank you. Uh, so regarding synthetic drugs, I do know quite a bit about uh, drugs and have uh, experience with uh, the kind of the underground, I guess, regarding uh, people that use them. I've known quite a few of them, and I've tried some myself. Um, I don't think that people who use drugs are criminals. I think that some people who use drugs do criminal things to be able to afford the drugs that they're buying, but that's a result of prohibition. And as we saw during alcohol prohibition in the first part of the 20th century, uh, prohibition has very specific effects. And it doesn't matter whether it's alcohol, whether it's marijuana, or whether it's you know whatever drugs, synthetic drugs, etc. If you prohibit it, it just goes underground, <coughs> and then the people who do a deal with those drugs, rather than fat stuff, as you mentioned, which doesn't shouldn't be carrying those things anymore, uh, because they've been prohibited in Keene, They'll now go underground, the drugs will not disappear, they will simply be offered by street dealers. And uh, those street dealers are usually less than honest in a lot of cases with the, the products that they're offering. The prices go up because they're prohibited, because the street dealers have to take on extra risk, because they're risking being arrested, they're risking time in jail. Uh, so because they take on risk, the prices have to go up, and each set of hands that the drugs go through, the prices increase because everybody's taking risk. And so because of high prices, you've got drug addicts who then commit robberies and do other horrible things, uh, break and enter and things like that to, uh, to be able to afford their, their habits. So the only solution when it comes to drugs is compassion for our neighbors. If somebody's addicted, putting them in a jail cell isn't going to help them. That's not going to help them. They're just going to get out of jail. When they get out, they're going to go and they're going to get their drugs again. Uh, so if you really care about people, prohibition is not the solution and there's been you know over a hundred years of history that have proved that the only way to handle the drug problem if there is one is to uh, offer people help rather than force it on them first thing as far as <clears throat> I support the decrimination of, of marijuana I've done that in my vote at the on the, at the city council level and at the state house level second is <clears throat> I do not agree whatsoever with mandatory sentences. If someone has a drug problem, you send them to rehab, you don't put them in jail. But I do not support <clears throat> synthetic um, drugs. You don't know what's in synthetic drugs. You don't know <clears throat> the consequences of synthetic drugs. And so whether you like the federal government or not, you like the FDA or not, when synthetic, if you give someone the opportunity to create any type of drug in their um, in their home lab or whatever in their backyard and release it to the general public, to whoever wants to use it, <clears throat> what happens? Everybody says yes, yes, yes. It's okay to use it, but as soon as someone's kid gets has a negative reaction or has a, ends up paralyzed, that person that wanted total freedom says, wait a minute, you, the government, it's your responsibility to make sure that it didn't happen to my kid in the first place, and it's your responsibility to pay for all the damage that's going to happen in the cost for my child for the rest of his or her life. <clears throat> we can't have it both ways. It would be great if people would take personal responsibility and say, hey, if I go and take this synthetic drug and something negative happens to me, it's my responsibility and it's not government's responsibility to pay for my bad judgment. And so I don't see people getting that responsible in the near future. And so I'm, I do not support synthetic drugs and I would support the ban of synthetic drugs. Thank you. Uh, now we'll open up the floor for any questions from the audience. Yes, Mr. Mr. Craig. 
if elected or in the case of Councillor Roberts re-elected, would you as a city councillor put forth a proposal for the city of Keene to auction off all public <clears throat> property that currently has an estimated value of $57 million and then use those funds to transition to voluntary funding for the city? Why or why not? You can't give it, I would not give a complete answer to that one because, for example, millions of dollars of property that belong to the city, the police station, the fire station, the public works, that is one group that we would not want to. 560 Marlboro Street, which is about 30 acres, we were, were trying to sell it. It's the old um, waste dump, it's the old public works area. It has some hazardous material, we're going through it. We want to get that off the, um, the city tax, uh, the city rolls as quickly as possible. We sold part of um, a number of acres of 560 Marlboro to a private business, I think it's Cheshire Tire right now, which is off the city roll and they're paying, tax pay, paying taxes. Another part in Keene is um, conservation land. There's a lot of land that people have sold easements to the city which the city kind of owns but really doesn't own. And, and part of the things that people with money can do the easements is helps reduce their taxes. So there may be a question going forward is, does the city continue to take on more and more easements to a lot of the forest land around the area? Because the forest land around the area goes in the easement, comes off tax rolls, but also prevents other businesses coming in to be able to, to use it. So yes, there are some property that the city needs to sell. It did that with railroad property, which is now paying more taxes in. Yeah, I, I somewhat agree with Chris on this. Uh, there are a couple of properties that probably need to stay in the city's hands, at least for now, including city hall, uh, as well as uh, you know fire department, police department, basic stuff like that. Although somebody could probably make an argument the police could move into a, a smaller facility. Uh, but yeah, so with the exception of a few select properties, I would support what you're proposing, uh, Daryl, and that is to auction off all city-owned land and city-owned properties with a, with a very, very few uh, exceptions. Did, it, did, did I answer your question? Okay, great. Well, I would have to agree with uh, the other two gentlemen here. Um, I think the city, uh, in my own mind, they like to hold these properties for some reason or other. They're not doing any good for the other taxpayers of Keene. Um, and they're just sitting there, a lot of them empty. Um, you've got uh, what used to be Bailey Ford down on Marlboro Street, that's empty. Um, I understand they're going to split it in half because they can't afford the taxes on it the way it is, and they're going to put two different uh, businesses in there so they can afford to keep it. Um, otherwise they'd lose it to the city for the taxes. And um, I don't feel that the city needs to own all the property that it does. Uh, why they do is beyond me. It's like any other person. Some people just like to grab things and hold on to them and not let go. And they're just sitting there and they're causing the rest of us to pay the burden on it. Thank you. Uh, at this point, each candidate may ask uh, another candidate a question, and this can, this can be followed by a 60-second response and rebuttal if necessary. So if you guys have any questions or any issues with one another. All right. <laughs> well, then. <laughs> oh, that works. Uh, each of you now have a 90 second closing statement. Pardon? I uh, give a 90 second closing statement. A closing statement. Well, um, as I say, I am uh, running for uh, a Ward 2 Council at large. At large, you mean, which is a two year term. Um, and I feel that probably some people. I did get enough votes to get on the primary, so I'm confident in that. I am campaigning. I, um, 
as I say, the only thing that probably would keep me off would be my age, but I still got my wits about me, and I think I can have them for a few more years to make good judgment. And, um, and if I get telephone calls from any taxpayer in the city of Keene with a question, and if I don't know the answer, I will get the answer for them, and I will get back to them with an answer because I sure as heck don't have all the answers, and I don't think anybody does. And I'm not afraid to pick up the phone and call the person that can give me the correct answer to get back to the person that called about this. Thank you. I'd like to thank everybody for uh, coming out here today and also everybody at home uh, for watching on Cheshire TV and online on YouTube. I know the, uh, this video will be posted to freekeen.com. Of course, that's, uh, one of, that's my blog site. I'm one of the bloggers there. And I uh, wanted to invite everybody to come over and, and look at the New Hampshire Liberty Party as well. We've got some great candidates who are in the race. Unfortunately, one of them couldn't make it here today. So if you go to nhliberty.info, you can learn more about uh, a party that actually stands for freedom and stands for independence, your personal independence from uh, the coercive state. I think the idea of the state is one its time has come, it's time for it to go away, just like the idea of chattel slavery went away over 100 years ago. Hopefully we will look back someday on the idea of the state and wonder how we could have ever uh, even tolerated it because uh, the idea of the state is nothing more than an excuse for our, our fellow neighbors to use violence and the threats of violence against us in order to get us to behave in the way that they want. I think that needs to end. It's an unneighborly thing to do and uh, I think that we need to approach things from a perspective of peace, and that's the perspective that I can represent on the city council, one of peace, one of liberty for everybody. So uh, thank you again for listening. Again, I'm Ian Freeman, and I'm running in the at-large race. Thank you, Mr. Freeman. Thank you. Again, I want to thank everyone for the opportunity, and like I said earlier, I wish there had been more people here because I think that's really important. The... Um, <clears throat> I really believe what the framers of the Constitution is that we have a republic, and I think a lot of times we like to say that we have a democracy. A democracy means one person says can put everything to a stop. A republic means that we all have to, to work together. We all have to be able to come up with the right decision or the best decision. We have to understand that we're not going to please everybody all the time, but we can't use the power of the majority to squash <coughs> down the minority. It has to be, we have a Republican form of government. We all have to get involved and we all have to respect everybody's um, rights in it. And it can be tough. And <clears throat> that's why I'm running for the office. I think I can make some of those tough decisions. I don't know all the answers. I keep studying and I try to learn more and more all the time. And I don't make a decision until I can get as much information as possible. And so I would welcome your, your vote and I would view it as a privilege to earn your vote. And thank you. Thank you, Mr. Roberts. Uh, thanks to the candidates, today's audience, and to those watching on Cheshire TV for watching this year's Cheshire County Candidates Forum. Um, and also the video is going to be available on freekeen.com. Um, so thank you, everyone.